Hi, my name is Dr. Liz Howard. I'm one of the doctors at Loomis Basin Equine Medical Center, and today I'm going to talk to you about a common summertime emergency, rattlesnake bites in horses. First, we're going to talk about the rattlesnake distribution in the state of California. In the southeastern part of the state, we have the western diamondback and the sidewinder rattlesnakes. These two do not generally venture up to the northern part of the state. The two types of rattlesnakes that we see in our area are the Great Basin and the Northern Pacific, Pacific rattlesnakes. They're both part of the western rattlesnake subspecies. Here's a few pictures of the snakes that we see in California. The top two pictures are of the western diamondback and the sidewinder snake. The bottom two are the more likely types of snakes that you would see in Northern California, the Great Basin and the Northern Pacific. When you think about where rattlesnakes are found, you most commonly think about them being found in pastures, rock outcroppings, on hiking and riding trails, but you can also find them in hay sheds, your garage, under door jams, and other areas in your yard. If you do suspect that your horse has been bitten by a rattlesnake or you actually saw it happen, the number one thing that we recommend that people do is stay calm in the moment. Most horses are going to get bit on their face or their legs. We recommend that you call your vet veterinarian right away and prevent your horse from moving around too much while you're waiting for your veterinarian to arrive. There are several things that we do not recommend, recommend that you do in case your horse is bitten by a rattlesnake. There are several first aid techniques that can actually make snake bites worse. We do not recommend that you apply tourniquets to your horse's legs if they've been bitten in the leg. We don't recommend that you apply cold packs or ice to their face or their leg as this can actually increase the spread of venom. And do not, and do not attempt to incise over the bite or apply suction techniques to the area. The way snake bites appear after they occur is rapid swelling. If horses are bit on the face, which happens very commonly, they can be swollen to sometimes twice their normal size. Snake bites on the leg, again, can also be very swollen, sometimes as big as a stovepipe. This is a common presentation of snake bites. Here are a couple of pictures of bites on the face. You can see in the picture with the very swollen face, this is an, a more acute bite. The picture where we see sloughing of the skin occurs days to even weeks after the bite. Next, we're gonna talk about how snake venom works after your horse is bitten by a rattlesnake. Venom consists of a mixture of enzymes, proteins, and peptides. And the venom goes in to damage both the skin, the muscle tissues, and actually affects the cardiovascular system of the horse as well. This can result in decreased ability to clot blood and prolonged clotting times, resulting in severe bleeding from the area or from the nose. Snake bite diagnosis is not always as straightforward as you would imagine, especially if the snake bite is not witnessed. Some of the clinical signs that we look for are two puncture wounds that we see after the two fangs bite, rapid swelling of the area, and broken blood vessels around the area of the bite. Some common laboratory findings on blood work after a horse has been bitten include decreased white blood cells, decreased platelets, which are required for clotting blood, decreased protein, which is required for maintaining blood pressure in your horse, and prolonged clotting times. When it comes to treatment of rattlesnake bites, one of the first things that we will assess when we arrive at your horse is to make sure that they're able to breathe. Because many horses are bit on the face, they can result in severe swelling of the head. Horses are nasal obligate breathers, meaning that they can only breathe through their nostrils. So if they are unable to do so, we will have to perform a tracheotomy in order to provide a direct airway for your horse. This involves cutting a hole into the trachea itself and placing a metal device that allows air to move freely through the trachea. The gold standard of treatment for rattlesnake bites is with antivenin. Antivenin is made from equine hyperimmune serum with venom from rattlesnakes. It's a solution of IgG and other serum proteins. The way that it is given is it's diluted in saline and given intravenously over 20 to 30 minutes. Most horses require one to two vials after being bitten by a rattlesnake and it's considered the gold standard of treatment. Other treatment that's important is supportive care. These horses are generally very painful. They require pain relief such as NSAIDs and opioids. Sometimes horses will also require IV fluids to help maintain their blood pressure. If your horse has not recently been vaccinated for tetanus toxoid, we'll also booster that vaccine. 
Other treatment may include antibiotics as secondary bacterial infection can occur. Prevention of rattlesnake bites is not always possible, especially in this area where we have many snakes. The best thing to do when out on the trail is to stay alert. Make sure that if you see a rattlesnake on the trail, give them a wide berth and check over logs and stumps before just walking over them with your horse. There is a rattlesnake vaccine available and while your horse may still require treatment if bitten by a rattlesnake if they've been vaccinated, it may buy, your, buy you time while you're waiting for the veterinarian for a ride and it may decrease the clinical signs in your horse. In closing, as a reminder, if your horse is bitten by a rattlesnake, stay calm and keep your horse in one place. If you're able to keep them in their normal pasture stall, that's ideal. If you happen to be out on the trail and a trailer can easily get to you to bring your horse to the trailhead, we recommend that. Otherwise, slowly walk your horse back to the trail head so that we can meet you there. If you are a long distance from the veterinarian and you have some banamine, you could give a dose of banamine while you're waiting for us to arrive. Thank you for watching. We hope that this was useful information for you and your horse. As always, the doctors at Loomis Basin Equine Medical Center are always available day and night. Please give us a call if you ever have questions or concerns about your horse.